Hello everybody, welcome back into my studio. Um, I've already spoken to you about the use of the ellipse uh, when we're drawing cylindrical objects, round objects, anything. Uh, and again, uh, the relationship of the ellipse in relation to the horizon that we always use as a kind of a standard. We're either looking down at something or we're looking up at something in relationship to that horizon. And of course that uh, affects the, uh, what, uh, the degree of the ellipse that we'll see. We've seen how, again, looking from above an ellipse is a perfect circle or a uh, cylindrical object is a perfect circle. And then when we look at it from a perspective view, it becomes an elliptical shape. So I talked to you about once we've drawn it, it's got the major and the minor axes. And as that ellipse goes above or below the horizon line or our eye level, that uh, minor ellipse decreases or increases. So, of course, right when we're at the eye level, you're just looking at the edge of the ellipse, so you won't see any of the actual <coughs> shape of the ellipse right at the horizon. So, what I want to do is a quick demonstration, uh, hopefully not take a lot of our time, um, and draw a couple of uh, cylindrical objects, bottles, of course, very symmetrical. So I'm going to start off with uh, just a single bottle. I'll draw that real quick, show you how the ellipses work within that uh, framework. And then I'm going to draw, do another quick demonstration of several objects together and how we kind of lay those, uh, plan out where to place those into the composition. So if you remember back when I was demonstrating our little flip flops, I talked about drawing from the shoulder and holding your pencil in a certain way. I try to encourage people to learn to draw with their arm and develop their, uh, their sensitivity to a vertical and horizontal lines without the use of straight edges. I found that once we start using straight edges, we become dependent on them, they become a crutch. And it also makes drawings look a little more mechanical. I don't have a problem with a little bit of a squealy line that, uh, you know, the human nature is a good thing. So with that being said, first thing we know about bottles and round objects is that they are perfectly symmetrical, right? So they're going to have an axis and that's where I always start and I'm going to try to just pull a nice straight line again, draw from, pull from my shoulder, develop my sensitivity to a nice vertical axis, which is hopefully nice and parallel with your edge of your paper. This also helps you get Objects look like they're standing up uh, properly into the picture plane. So once you've got that axis established, nice long vertical axis, then you're going to establish where the drawing is, you know, the top of the object and the bottom of the object, just as we did with the uh, little flip-flop demonstration I did. So I'm going to draw the bottle this large, um, which one I'll work from this tallest bottle over here. And, uh, so again, I'm looking, they're all, all those objects are below my eye level, so I'm seeing a very slight indication of this top ellipse up here, the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and place that symmetrically on that axis. So it's equally placed right there on that vertical axis. This is how we get things, again, looking straight and symmetrical. What I like to do is start identifying where the different ellipses would occur as far as the uh, proportions of the bottle itself. I've talked with you a little bit about proportions and how to judge proportions and size relationships of an object. So I'm gonna pay attention to that. I may have made that top ellipse just a little bit wide for how tall I'm gonna be drawing this bottle. So I'm gonna make that correction. I'm going to have us spending some time after this little presentation practicing drawing freehand ellipses. Again, similar to how I don't like to use straight edges, I like to develop your arm and your hand and eye coordination to develop good formed ellipses as well. So I see that there's a little collar down here, another ellipse. It's just a little bit wider than the very top ellipse.
Okay, now I'm gonna come down. What I like to do is look wherever there's changes of direction of the object, that exterior contour line. Where does it change direction? It comes down. That neck I'm looking at here tapers ever so slightly and comes down. And I'd say, judging by my judgment, that neck is about, if I'm looking at halfway, just about a quarter of the distance from top to bottom it represents. So I'm gonna go right about here and you'll see that next ellipse at the bottom of that neck residing right about there. Okay, so of course the shoulders are going out and where do I see the next ellipse? The next ellipse is occurring I'd say about two-thirds of the way up. So notice that your minor axis is getting a little bit taller as we're going down the object. I'm still placing, I got equal lateral distance on either side of that. Be careful to get your nice rounded corners on that ellipse. These are all just, again, my ghost drawing. I'm laying in these things just so I can use once I want to place my contour line at the end. So let me go down. I don't see any other change for the majority of the bottle down to where, once I'm getting lower here, I'm seeing another little detail right about here. And that ellipse, that minor, minor axis has gotten quite a bit taller. Now at this point, it's still the major axis has not changed, so it's going to be about the same width as the ellipse I placed up here. So the minor major axis has not changed, it's just that minor axis that's getting taller. And then I come down in the very, very bottom ellipse. Same width on the major axis, just a little bit taller in the minor. <clears throat> so now I've got all these little ellipses placed at the major points that I see them on the bottom. Now the only thing I'm left to do is to connect those and give me my correct symmetry and exterior contour line. So I see that there's a little bit of a bulge out to the shoulder. Come down here. It tapers out just a little bit to the edge of that ellipse equal on either side. I'm going to try to match that arc of the shoulder as I come down to the location of this next ellipse. And now I'm just going to carefully drop, again drawing from the shoulder, not using a straight edge, just dropping straight down to the tangent of that next ellipse down. And going down and around the bottom of the next that very lowest ellipse. Drop it straight down, tangent of that, come into that lower ellipse and around the bottom. So there we go. Now that we've got uh, all the information, we can kind of read this. I think I maybe have this top ellipse just a little bit too tall a little flatter than that. You want to really kind of develop your eye and your sensitivity to what looks correct. Can you see the drawing, Kai? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, let me see, is there any other little objects and stuff. I talked about um, 
looking for shapes within. I'm going to go ahead at this point, since I've got my axis on there, I'm going to go ahead and lose my ellipses that I don't really need there. Those were just kind of guidelines for me for where, again, where there were directional changes to make note of. And that looks pretty accurate. I'm going to look at some of these shapes that I'll see in there. Some little highlights, I see some reflections. This is just getting some little glass effects. There's a dark edge that I see coming down this side. Comes in, and there's another elliptical detail. Oh, whoops. Highlight. Thickness of the bottle at the very bottom. So keep in mind, though, we don't necessarily see ellipses going all the way down. If we were to draw a label on here, that same ellipse concept goes into play. So you will have that same idea of the minor axis being very short up here at the top. And as we go down, that minor axis gets taller. So that's essentially how we go and get our bottles to look, our cylindrical objects, whatever objects we're drawing. To look like it's not falling over one direction and it's absolutely symmetrical. We again start with that vertical axis, make sure that our ellipses are placed evenly on that axis as we go down. If that ellipse gets taller as it goes down the minor axis. <clears throat> and that's what gives us this is a little visual clue that gives it the roundness, that effect of the round bottle. So that is essentially it on how we, I mean, you could spend a lot more time and look inside and look for little reflections and shapes that I talked about earlier. But there's always a bunch of little things that we can indicate when we're looking at uh, doing just contour line drawing, little shapes and reflections that happen on the surface of glass and such and contained within there. I'm going to leave it at that. So let me move from here over to and talk about how I approach drawing a number of different objects together. So obviously, um, in addition to their proportional differences between one bottle, the height of this one compared to this one, compared to this jar down here, those are all considerations. But the first thing I want to know is how are they located in space compared to me, compared to the viewer where you're at? So what I like to do is start with the furthest one back away from me <clears throat> and place what I call a footprint. So I'm going to go ahead and imagine that ellipse is about that big around, that minor, major axis. I'm going to place that, what I call the footprint of that one. This one here is a little bit closer to me, but it's pretty much close right next to that other one. They're about the same width. So I'll draw another. And 
bits there. Now this jar is considerably closer to me and it's actually in front of this other bottle here. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that one and it's going to be, I'm looking a lot further down at it so it's going to have a taller minor axis. It's a little bit wider, I mean considerably wider than the other two bottles there. So I'm going to go ahead and I personally like the, the more organic approach to drawing and developing your eye and your sensitivity to proportions and correct, you know, placement and such. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? I kind of like to try to avoid looking at things too mathematically, let's say. Freehand, drawing freehand. Again, I'm not really overly concerned if Things don't look like perfectly mechanically straight lines and such. We want accuracy, but we also keep in mind that this is a drawing. It's a human hand creating these objects. So, okay, now I've got the three footprints of those objects basically where they belong. So I'm going to start back here and making a judgment of how, where's the tallest one? This bottle is obviously the tallest one. I'm going to go ahead and right dead center on that ellipse, pull a vertical line up, see that is about how tall I'm going to draw that one, this one in relationship to that one, do the same thing, go ahead and get my vertical line, keeping as Parallel again, keep in mind, develop your eye to kind of where you feel like you're staying parallel with the edge of your paper so everything looks correctly located and properly drawn. Let me make it just a little taller there. <clears throat> okay, now my jar here. And it extends actually up. Okay, I can see that I didn't get a very vertical line on that one. Let me try that again. Okay, so I may be off a little bit again. Just uh, we're working with organic <laughs> drawing techniques, so we just basically don't want it to look cattywampus when we start creating these. So let me start with this back one here. And again, I'm looking down the top, and just as I did with these, I'm going to move a little quicker on this. I don't need to quite as carefully explain what I'm doing as I just did on the other demonstration. So I'm going to come down here and say, okay, where's that next ellipse? A little bit wider than that one. The major axis is a little bit wider down to where the shoulders and pretty much just drops straight down to the very bottom so let me go ahead and establish that exterior contour line Again, my ghost drawing, this doesn't need to be very heavy. Now, I'm going to look at this. I think, judging from what I'm looking at, I think that I can exaggerate this lower ellipse a little bit more. <clears throat> Keep that in mind. I found that the, it's always better to make that lower ellipse a little taller than maybe you think you should. Um, let me just do it real quick. 
example of some things that can happen with you uh, inaccurately. So, uh, thank you, Kai. If we make our top ellipse too tall and our bottom ellipse too flat, what can happen is that it'll look like the top is leaning over and looking at you. I'm just doing a very, very quick little sketch. Looks like the top of the bottle is leaning over and looking at you and the bottom doesn't look round enough. So always exaggerate, make that lower lips round enough, top of lips flat enough. So I'm going to just real quickly go ahead and place these other ellipses for the jar. I think that's actually a little taller than I've made it. I'm going to go ahead and make that adjustment. Comes up about halfway from what I see on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and create that. Very carefully go ahead and first outline and now let's go back and very quickly lay this one out. I'm seeing even less of that a little taller so that top ellipse is going to be pretty flat. Very important to make sure that your ellipses are placed equally on that axis. And come down here. One more. I think that I want to make this larger and a little rounder at the very bottom to kind of emphasize the roundness of the bottle. And now we just go ahead and connect those exterior contour lines. That part on the shoulders drop down and around the bottom of that lower lips. Make that really nice and round. So now in relationship to this horizon, I'm not actually looking quite down at it, so I'm going to give a reference to the tabletop, the surface that it's sitting on. So that's how we go ahead and get the placement and the arrangement of the composition. Now, of course, I'm going to go back in and erase a lot of the uh, guidelines that I don't really need. But um, this is essentially how to draw these simple cylindrical and symmetrical shapes. Uh, so initially start with that vertical axis as I mentioned. Get the placement of the ellipse where you see directional changes and uh, keep remembering that relationship of that top ellipse to the bottom ellipse. Now before I jump back over to the classroom here I want to show you what we're going to just a quick shot of um, our homework assignment. We are going to do 10 cylindrical objects, cups, it can be bowls, anything, uh, pens, just as long as it's a cylindrical round object. Uh, and you'll do, I guess, um, since we got those smaller newsprint pages, do five on each page, draw them as large as you can. I'll want to see the little vertical axis, and I'll want us all be able to look and judge, you know, your view of them. So. Again, I'll post this uh, into my uh, PowerPoint and we'll look at this. So that's it. I'm going to go back over to the classroom and see you over there.